Back in the 1980s, if you were headed to the beach and wanted to have all your entertainment bases covered, you might bring something along like this. The TV boombox? Yes, the GPX model TV3. It's a TV boombox from 1986. Much like a Swiss Army knife, it's packed with a ton of different features. You can watch TV, you can listen to AM or FM radio, or play or record cassette tapes. Unfortunately, as we'll see in a minute, out of the box, this boom box doesn't have much boom without a little bit of help. This was given to me last week. It was sitting in a garage for several years and was very dirty. The only problem I could find was a scratchy volume control, which was fixed easily with some cleaner. And this thing still works, so this isn't going to be a repair video. After 34 years, everything in here worked. Even the belts on the tape deck worked. It would be pretty interesting if you saw one at the beach. This product is made by GPX, which is also known as Grand Prix. As a teenager back in the 80s, GPX was a brand that I actively avoided. In my mind, there were unattainable brands that were like having a great chef cook you an expensive meal. But I could really only afford the more mainstream brands. Below that was the sort of fast food Kmart stuff. And even below that, in my mind, was GPX. Because they were usually sold in the plastic bubble shells at Walgreens, the local drugstore. I don't know that that... A, re a reputation is deserved or not. I mean, the company is still in business today. You can order their products online or from Walmart. What if they have a phone? Let's take a look and see if there's in anything interesting about this boombox. First, the TV. All the contaminated beer back to the brewery where it can be properly disposed of, eh? Being from the analog era, this boombox is not going to be picking up anything on its own without the help of a VCR or a converter box. But I found that with a good quality tape, the five inch picture was actually decently clear. It's black and white. Yes. I hate it now. <laughs> well, you know, they used to have black and white and color TVs. What's notable about this tuner is the way they break up the VHF section. In the U.S., when I was growing up, we had VHF channels 2 through 13 and UHF channels 14 through 83. But on TVs like this with a vertical tuning bar like a radio, it's interesting that they broke up the VHF section, which has fewer channels, and to VHF low. Why and did VHF... they build something like this? That's my question. Why do they build something like this? I guess just so you could take it with you. You know, if you're out at the beach or you go on vacation, you want to take your radio. Let's we take this to the place we're going. Back then, we didn't have the internet and cell phones, so you had to take Let's your... see how people react to it. On the back, you've got an external antenna input and some picture controls, a place to hook up to your car battery power, the outlet, and this large Classic. battery compartment. This battery compartment holds eight C batteries and they're put in these tubes. Did you have C batteries? I don't have any now. I don't have anything that takes C, but you put in eight C batteries and those tubes help hold them in place so they don't spring out of there. Inside the device, it's not as bad as what I would have thought for a really cheap component. There are actually separate boards for the TV and various components, and everything is labeled as made in Taiwan. It looks like, based on this drop of solder at the bottom, that it uh, is at least somewhat hand assembled. Uh, but, yeah, there's the solder. But the cassette mechanism looks pretty low end with a very thin flywheel. The only other interesting thing I noticed was the built in microphone. On the front, it looks as if there are two separate microphones for stereo recording on the left and right. However, on the inside, it's clear that there's only one microphone on the left side, and the other side is just sort of a placeholder hole. But there are uh, external microphone inputs if you did want to record something in stereo. Anyway, in pretty the, interesting. It is interesting looking. However, the quality, the worst thing about it is the sound quality. There's nothing there but a simple tone control, low or high. If they just put a little bit more effort into the amplifier section, it would have sounded so much better. It just has no bass. It just sounds really unpleasant. It's a disaster. I don't know if it's a disaster. I just can't see myself listening to it. But we thought we'd try to fix the problem with software. Let's take one of these cassette adapters and uh, put it in there. And what we'll do is we'll try to use our Amazon Kindle, and I've got this program with an equalizer on it, and we can play a, a selection from the YouTube audio and see if we can boost the sound to make it sound better. Okay, let's see what happens. This is through, it's going to explode. This is through the camera mic, but you'll be able to get the idea. Let's see what happens.
that's about it for the TV boombox. I, I really... Um, it's just like a disaster waiting to happen. I don't think this thing is a total disaster, but it's just not really, even with, you know, it's just not that pleasant to listen to. There's a lot of hiss in the amplifier. There's crackling on the tape. It's just not very good quality. It's kind of a case of jack of all trades, master of none. But I could see it, you know, sitting on a kitchen counter. You could watch a morning news report, listen you to did. listen to some uh, voice stuff or something like that. Uh, but anyway, that's about it. And, and we'll, see we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye-bye. Will you meet me after the show? I don't think I have to. <laughs> Perfect. Now that completes our first lesson. Are there any questions? Yeah, am I intruding? You certainly are. Hey, Whipsnake! Hey, are you Whipsnake?